okay with levels now we are pretty much understood the repercussions of if we going to change the uh, grid settings the entire grid will also be changed so let's come back here mm -hmm. and undo the way we want to okay and the next step would be I have made such arrays here now I don't need those arrays you know when you put an arrow and then there are lots of group and associate command attached to it your file becomes more heavy because now there is a parametricism add to it whatever you're going to do it is bi-directional thing you're going to make change and it will be reflected everywhere so it's best for us once the uh, you know things are settled we have done our part and everything is freeze we just right click it okay select all instances visible visible in view you select it everything is going to unselect and in the contextual tab just ungroup it in the same manner if these are the these are there right click select all instances visible in view and then ungroup it in this uh, area, if I select now one grid and now select all, select all instances visible in view, all the grids are going to be get selected. But now you would be thinking why we need to do for groups for two times. Because group was one type, then there was two types of groups. So it was just selecting the instances. If you see, right click, it says select all instances. It doesn't say select all types. So select all instances means it relates to one of a, one of a type. Groups were two types, there were two types of groups over there. Right now there is only one type of grid. If you see grid one, then I'm going to just select all instances visible in view. And then I'm going to say pin. The shortcut for pin is PN. Okay. And now I'll go to the selection toggles. I'll say, I want to select this pin elements. And the moment I do this, everything is neat and clear. Okay. <coughs> Let's do this part here. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, I'm recording. Yes, yes. Now, uh, working with levels happen. Now, applying a view template. Let's talk about what is view templates. What are views, view settings, and all that stuff. You go to this manage tab. In this manage type, underneath this object styles, this is called as a global view properties. If you're going to change anything in this open object styles, everything is going to change in entire project so if you see you will mainly see that in an object style there are four categories all these four categories have uh, certain things uh, i know uh, can i ask how many people have uh, seen the first uh, implementation notes that i have given to you and everybody see, saw it huh? there was there was a revit element hierarchy that I have shown uh, in that uh, in, uh, email. If you see, um, one second, it's just hanging. This happened. Uh, I have just asked for a one manual stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you. <coughs> so we have this BIM notes, right? Implementation notes. If you see here, I have attached a one LOD definition discipline wise, and then then I have attached a status bar we have discussed LOD definition right in detail now there is a revit elements hierarchy that I have sh um, uh, you know attached with it so that you guys understood what the entire elements work it out so if you see uh, Bangalore people as well if you see here <coughs> the elements they are all being divided between view specific and the model elements so for your information just understand that four model elements are equivalent to parametric elements that I have been always referring to. And this view specific case, if you change anything, 
It won't you know, get changed in other uh, views as well. Plan elevation section, they won't be changed. Now you see here, detail elements and then annotation elements. These all are parts of annotation. Okay, we'll discuss it afterwards. But if you see in the Revit elements, there's a third category. Apart from model elements and view specific, there are two more categories called view elements and data elements. I have discussed about data elements to you, right? You can see, you can see <coughs> levels, column lengths, and reference planes. There are three types of basic data elements. And in the beginning reference plane, I have told you two more different types of data elements. Reference points and reference lines. Okay? So if you see, these are non-physical items used to establish a project context. If you don't do that, you can't create any kind of context in the project. But if I talk about view elements, in this in, uh, and under this view element, how are you going to make it see, how are you going to control, how they are going to look like, that completely comes under object size first. So write it down, first step is object size. Object size. Underneath object size, it comes visuality graphics. Visuality graphics. So, well, yeah, yeah. your voice is not clear. Huh? It's not clear. Your voice is not clear. It's okay. Not audible first. Okay, okay. Now it's clear? Yeah, it's not right now it's not clear? Yeah. yeah, it's okay now. It's okay? Okay. Now the thing is, please write uh, in your notebooks. First is object styles. Second, um, make a arrow because it's a hierarchy. So um, underneath object styles comes visuality graphics. And underneath visuality graphics comes override. Override visuality graphics. So uh, this is a three layer department. First we uh, go to this object styles, how we are going to see and think and all that stuff in the, view, uh, in the object styles stuff. Like if you see in this object style, this is a global settings about how your cable trays are going to look like. What is the projection of this uh, you know, cable trays? What would be the cut? Right now it is showing that there is no cut. It, uh, if you are going to cut your cable trays fittings, you won't see anything like it won't cut it will come as it will come as whole plus what would be the line color what would be the solid pattern what would be the material attached to it so if you see here entirely there is a filter list on the top okay first of all let's discuss about this four different different topics this model objects is all the relevant thing that you're going to model all the elements that you need to model all that comes under model objects in this model object, you need to understand whatever you're going to do, it will uh, put this, uh, you know, uh, settings in every kind of uh, uh, elevation sections and view and schedules and all every, everywhere. Even you're going to put a legend in or your, or your sheets. If you say, if I say that I don't, I, if I want to see my walls as red, then it will be shown as red. You see here, there's a wall a category. In this wall category, if I say I don't want to see my wall as black, but I want to see my ball as ball as you know some red because it's much more highlighted color. I said press OK and I'll apply. See OK. See what happened? And it's not view specific. Even if I'm going to go to this my elevation, any of my elevation, every ball would be noted by that. Okay. Now if I undo it, okay. And over here, I press VV, which comes under object styles. Okay. In this VV, if I if I choose that, you see, there's a same same set of categories that you were seeing in object styles. 
But if in BB, if I am going to change walls over here in the cut patterns or like what is the difference between cut and project surface? Cut will be seen in the, the moment when you're going to put any section through it. Whenever you're cutting, cutting that thing, it will show that as that. Like in elevation I'm talking about, it's nothing going to be cut. Everything is project surface based. So right now if I do any changes in cut, nothing will show up. But if I put anything in the project surface, the, the, the qualities would be shown. Like how? If I say I want to cut it and the line should be override and I say it should be blue. Or whatever it is, blue. Okay. And press OK. And over here also I say pattern, let it be. If I say pattern also, so like supposedly this, okay, and I'll apply it. See what happened. If you see, this pattern changed. Now, but if I'm if I just go to this another elevation of yours, okay. Is it showing the same way? Or is it showing the same way in the elevation four? No. Eventually, eventually, even if I go to any of the level one, it won't show as blue, it will show as black. That's a difference. The view visuality graphics are view specific. You need to, you need to understand what are the standards, how you're going to make it possible to see what is what you want. Plus, like now if you want your beams to have a hatched line. So you may configure it in object styles, not in view specific. But if you want something to be just shown in your elevation or any particular point or area, you're going to use the visuality graphics part. Plus, eventually, if you go to this elevation one, where we have changed this uh, some sort of stuff, if you see here, this these are the different different walls that we have created. Supposedly, I don't want to create this wall as this watch. I want to give a different set of visibility settings to this wall. Then I'm going to use a third category called override the visuality graphics. And this, this third category would be very much element specific. So right click and in this right click there is an option called over graphics, override graphics in view. This would be very much view specific and I'm not going to do it by category but if, because if I do it by category then it will change the entirely. I'll say by element. Able to understand? Yes. The moment I do this, there is again the same set of uh, options that, in, that was provided in the visuality graphics. If you see, in the VV, when I was changing wall, in the C, the project surface, line, pattern, transparency, cuts me, lines and patterns. This kind of options were there. In the same manner, if I change right click, right click, and override, first you have to select it and then override graphics by view and element you see the same types of options are there so over here this is a projection if I change this projection line why I'm telling you again and again because you will end up changing this cut line and nothing will show up and then you will say that it's not showing up because cut lines will not be of any use see for my if I change here cut line to blue okay and and the pattern to be like this okay and then you see nothing will show up but if I select right click override by graphics by element, okay, over here I say reset. I don't want these cut lines to be there. I want my projection lines to change and to come as somewhat of anything color like this. I'll press OK, I'll press apply. See what happened? Plus, now you see there's a difference. Now the edge of this wall coming up, these are called projection lines. The surface, the entire uh, area which is covered that comes under the surface patterns and the entire transparency of it like what happened is this, if you want to show the columns which are hidden by the walls outside it I change the transparency of the walls in order to let me see the columns inside then I'll change this surface pattern but over this area if I change the projection line pattern if you see this and I press apply see what happened the projection line surface change plus you can give the weight to it able to understand how control you can do over your you know the sheets what happened was I went to one of the uh, you know firms 
in India, in Delhi. So they were saying that Revit is an impractical software because you're not able to, uh, you know, uh, get a hold of how much width is needed to be there and how we are going to control it. Like the same line widths are not able to show up in Revit. Whereas we, in AutoCAD, we use AutoCAD layers and we can easily show it up. I said that it's just a matter of proficiency and your uh, skill uh, skill sets on your Revit. If you don't know about these things, you won't be able to uh, configure your line set, line weight and how you want to show it up. But if you know it, then it's, it's very easy. Now why I'm telling you about this? Why I'm telling you about surface transparency? There's a reason when you are seeing an elevation and some part of a building is coming before uh, then the other part of the building you need certain level of transparency over there you need that your weight lines line weights of the uh, previous part of the building should come lighter and the front part of the building comes more darker so you know how to change the weight of that so what you're going to do is in the visuality graphics you're going to set a normal standard weight standard and then you're going to have a box selection of the front area and then you're going to override the graphics by element. And from here you can change the color, their width, and their transparency level. That's how you're going to create a better and good visuals. If you are if you think that Revit should take it automatically, boss, it won't work like that. Because eventually it can create anything. It can create automatically anything. But you need to smoothen it up, you need to polish it up. For your elevations to work out in your sheets, you need to uh, create annotation right you need to create you need to give a line weight to it you need to uh, showcase lots of details in it so that details and all that things can be done in uh, other parts like if you see in the annotate portion there are different sets of things that you can do detail line region component whatever you want to do it in autocad it can be done from that part so able to understand viewed settings now be careful what happened is this this vg Okay. Morning. Morning, Mrs. Piroz. So, uh, your team is uh, connected to uh, uh, Bangalore. Yeah, they are all there. <laughs> Good day. Thank you. So, uh, if you see um, this visuality graphics, I wanted to tell you that there is a filter list. Okay. In this filter list, if you go down, right now everything is selected. But if you are in structural people, just going to select this thing structure and everything related to structural part will come up even the walls would be structural walls okay so in this case scenario you can see if by default you have a structural template inside your uh, visuality graphics this filter list by by default will have a structure into it and then you will not be able to find any architectural element into this so in order for you to uh, you know change the visuality graphics of an architecture element you need to go to this filter list and then check the architecture part write it down write it down visuality graphics filter list huh? it would be view specific it would be view specific visuality graphics in itself is a view specific thing Now visuality graphics has four points. First is model categories. First is model categories. Second is annotation. Third is analytical. Fourth imported and fifth is filter. Yeah. Now model categories are for all the elements that you are going to create in 3D space. Okay. Annotation categories are non-graphical content that you are going to add with the graphical content. So if you see non-graphical content means all the information related to models, all the tags, all the annotations, all the symbols, graphic symbols, static symbol, all your keynotes, all your parametric annotations, all your uh, text, okay, all your tags, whether it's wall tag, door tag, mechanical tag, duct tag, fire tag, a plumbing tag, whatever it is, everything comes under your annotation categories and again, if you see in the annotation category, there will be a filter list. And over here, you have to see this, and you know, you have to check this up. If you have not checked this up, you will say, my God, my, these things are grayed out. How can I change it? Okay. So you need to understand why I'm telling you this, 
because I myself has surfaced this problem. And I end up, you know, configuring it for half an hour and a one hour, and I was not able to find why this is not showing up. Then I understood, oh, oh, I have to select this. That is going to happen, and this will happen most when you are going to reference other discipline files, while you are like putting like structure people putting architectural file into it, and maybe people putting architectural file into it. Then you need to configure the visuality graphics of that file as well. Over there, this will not show. So in that case scenario, you have to take it. Second, annotation category is completed. A third thing is analytical model category. Analytical model category is all related to the sixth dimension of BIM that is called sustainability or energy thing, like analysis. What all analysis you can do now for the structure people, and they can easily relate to. In this, there is analytical beam, braces, columns, whatever you do in E tabs in Tecla, there is like a line. And in that bending movement, shear loads, loads, and all that stuff you do, you can do completely inside here as well. So whenever you are going to create anything, show please make understand that you are not able to see the analytical models for the time being because you will not be working in analytical things. You need to uncheck this analytical model for the time being. The moment you are into the analytical phase where you are doing a lot of analysis. Then only you should put yourself into the analytical part. Otherwise, I think you should refrain from it. Why I'm telling you? If I select this analytical problem things here, and I press OK. Supposedly, I'm showing an analytical node, and I'll apply and I'll press OK. That's everything. And just in the elevation part, I go this to this the level one of structural plan. Okay, these are the walls I have. Then by default, I choose what. I have columns as well. I have walls as well. And by in the structure part, I go to this beam. Okay, in this beam, there is no structural family loaded. I'll press yes, and I'll go down. In this, there is a structural framing. I'll double click here. In the structural framing, there is like precast concrete and all that stuff. I'll say concrete, concrete rectangular beam. I want to select and install it. The moment I press open. The moment this command got activated, you see on grids option, it becomes very easy for you. The moment you select this on grids option, and I'm going to select this part, okay, press this part, see what will happen, right? And then you finish it up. I'm doing it right now very fast, but this is the way it has to be. If you see, most of the structure are rectangular or squares. Most of the structures are well defined in the grid pattern. So the moment you put this up, you can easily put uh, you know the endpoints and over there rather than you know modeling each and every uh, beam one by one, one by one, one by one. So I'll tell you about the integrations of beam, how we are going to um, you know modify it as well. But right now I am showing all this thing to make you understand why analytical properties should not be enabled because if you want to delete something. You will end up deleting the analytical nodes and analytical lines of those you know, property, which would be catastrophic. Because right now you're modeling anything. After all, you're going to energy do this energy modeling, right? And in the modeling, you don't want to see the analytical nodes and this thing. You will end up deleting those things, which then again you have to rework. You, again, you have to do some analytical things. Now you see, go to the analysis and analyze part over there. You can see this. You can do all this stuff. Load and all that analysis. There is a percentage involved in it, how much it's accurate and all, but it becomes more accurate when you combine it with the another software called Robot Structures, which will be taught to you. So in that case scenario, this thing will become more energized. So whenever you're going to model something, you can properly see. Okay, this is the thing. Right now, we what happens is this: we make a model, and then in a separate model, we're going to do this analysis. Now some revision happens. We need to do this revisions again to that area, into that different software. When all these softwares are all combined together in a single environment, and when you are changing into it one into one platform, it will be simultaneously getting going to get changed into the another environment as well. Plus, if I go to this 3D part now, okay, over here, you see what happened is this. I'll change the graphic style to shaded for you to see. What happened? Okay, 
over here i go to this home button as i have told you i'll say right click and i'll say orient my view my 3d view to the floor plan of structural plan level 1 press okay now the section box will up, open up and i'll go down and i'll change it see so we are able to see this beams very properly okay if you see in the vg part i say annotation and analytical part agrees what happened is this so i have yes i have not shown it the moment i select this part and i'll press okay apply press okay and you see able to see what is happening in the disk beam there is a small thick line coming up yes. you can see yes. in between yes. and eventually when you when you going to change it you see the nodes here as well so if you going to delete something like i delete this part okay that node category also get changed yes. deleted if i you see just i hit tab tab what is what are you saying in the status bar can you read it yes analytical beams if i press tab this is a actual beam that i would be selecting but if i press tab this is the analytical beam that i would be you know, selecting so you need to understand what this category is for when you want it and do you want it uh, to be seen in every model categories or not so that you don't do any blunder you know what you are doing so in the bg you is going to say i don't want to see an analytical properties but when uh, yes 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 yeah yeah frame structure proper frame structure you can do it but then you need robot structures also for in order to reinforce those things like like if you talk tell me about the clash detection you know most of the people don't know but revit in itself has a clash detection uh, in in its side like most of the people say uh, we need to use uh, you know this uh, uh, the software called navisworks for the clash detection yeah we need but the thing is in what navisworks does it it becomes it makes the model much more lighter for you to navigate through it when three different disciplines are there plus it is more interactive when you are solving the clash detection but it doesn't mean revit does not do it revit also do do those things so what we do is in the most of the clashes we solve in revit, revit in itself because there are two types of clash detections in revit first is clash interface and second is clash detection so in that the models which are going to we are which are clashing with each other they going to get solved out plus there is an interface check also when when we do this our model becomes much more you know much more accurate and then we are going to do much more refined kind of a clash detection in a similar fashion we do this ana uh, analysis as well we do it like from here we what can nothing there is no difference so if you see statpro does the same thing that this does but the thing is there would be good interoperability it might be possible that statpro when you are importing data from revit that the data would not be properly fed up into the statpro and you will not you will end up not getting the accurate results that you want but in this uh, robot structures it's a on, it's also a part of autodesk so both of these things have a best interoperability so you can easily export the data and that there would be no data loss as well that is the difference plus um, you know when you are designing stuff you don't need that much of kind of an analysis you need a proper kind of analysis to make you understand okay okay we can do this we can do that that's it so for that particular majors revit thing is properly done when you want to do a much more refined type then you can use this tecla or robot structures and all those stuff you can integrate with it okay so you understood analytical model imported category is all about when you are going to import uh, either your uh, not either just your autocad imports all the imp uh, autocad you know, files that you going to do that uh, going to import it will show up here and then you can change the visibility of those imports yeah anything image pdf and all this stuff you can import it here and you can uh, you know if you, if your autocad has different set of layers it will be showing in a different colors right over here you just click it 
and just override this and then you can say I just want everything in black or I want it in a half tone you can change it and in the filters now filters what are filters filter is the next advanced category in which we create our own filters filters means like out of 50 things we want just three to four things which are more important in a project to be shown okay so I'll create a kind of an exclusive group for you to understand I will create, create an exclusive group and this group will have a lot of different different elements to it and I'll say I want to have a different set of view properties for this particular filter okay like how filter works um, if you say in the fire system or in the mechanical system let's talk NP and let's talk structure okay if in the structure I, I create a rule that all the beams which are more than this diameter like x diameter and which which have uh, x m concrete involved they would be shown with green green and whoever is less than that will be shown up by yellow so that is the rule that i have created or you can say filter i have created so among every type of column if those things are matching like a diameter particular diameter or particular um, M concrete the automatically Revit will donate those uh, category with green and the other will be shown up with the other color so that is a very important for you to understand okay this is our thing when we talk about MEP there are mechanical doubts I say I want certain of mechanical doubts whose CFM is more than 50 uh, which unit you use in CFM Huh? VAVs. VAVs. So that's a unit. The like if I say this is a CFM flow of this, uh, uh, you know, this duct. So what I say like 50 CFM. Yeah, CFM only. Okay. So if I say uh, the ducts who are going to be having a CFM of more than 50 CFMs, this will be shown by green. Otherwise, anything which is, which is getting uh, below is going to be shown by red. So it, in 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 a way we can understand. Okay, these spaces would be you know uh, much more warmer than the uh, other spaces other spaces would be much more cooler in the same similar fashion if I talk about architecture so I can I have lots of walls so I'll say all the walls who have uh, fire rating of 80 which can withstand of one hour of uh, you know maximum exposure of 2100 degrees Celsius so they all will be uh, marked up with red and everything else would be marked up by green so I can easily show to my uh, department who are going to do the fire extinguishment thing that these are the areas where fire rating is that much and you can control the fire up to that much part and all these things are not so this is a way of us to much more uh, you know get into it like it would I would say it's a fourth different part of a visuality graphics which is much more intelligent for your uh, clients and you for yourself to understand what is what you can see in the AutoCAD there are lots of layers and in that layer you are not able to understand what is what especially when all uh, that project is being done by other consultants or other uh, you know discipline wise then you will understand oh this hatch then you see the layer okay this hatch is for this and then that hatch is also having some you know small small names and you have to understand from the client what is this what is that what is this what is that it makes a lot of difference so you understood all the five categories now now let's come to this topic of what is called applying a view template. I have told you about views, uh, the setting, set of categories. If you go to your instance property of your 3D view, if you go down, there is an option called view template. Okay. In, uh, if, you, if you go to this structure plans, uh, Bangalore team, are you following me? You able to understand? Yes. 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 Everybody is active. Yes. 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 No. No. Nobody is active. All are active. All are active. Acha. So, ah, ah, समझ में आ रहा है ना? Everybody is understood. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, 
the thing is um, how what are view templates okay now if you go to this instance property of this view you have an option called view template now what are view templates please write it down view templates are set of settings view templates view templates are set of set 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 of visibility settings visibility settings that you save that you save that you save and apply it to apply it to more than one more than one view now what i'm trying to say is like if you understand this these are my they, there are like four levels that we that i have now for example i don't want to use object style okay but i want my walls all walls in my structure plan to be seen as red what i'm going to do i'll go to structure level one okay now over here i press vg i'll go to this walls and then this walls i say my projection line should be red okay this is a one way of doing things i'll press okay i'll press apply and okay anything happen now see i also uh, forgot i have done things in projection surface and i am in plan plan may there is no projection there is cut properties which are you know enabled so over here i am not anything done in projection surface won't won't be helping me i need to go to this cut properties in this cut properties and the line part i'll say press okay press okay okay and i'll press apply when mm -hmm. i do it okay. it happened mm -hmm. right now i go again to level 2 and then again i have to press vg okay like level 1 i'm telling you how to because right now if you see in the 3d in the 3d i don't have a, a you know my just go to this view and i say selection box i don't want it so i'll have a by default a proper view of it now this call walls are only in level 1 they are not on level 2 level 3 level 4 level 5 6 so if you see here there is a level 2 i'm not able to see i'm not able to see anything now what i'm going to do is i'll wt okay press okay wt over here tab it will select all chain of lines chain of walls did you got this uh, thing uh, the bim management classes you got the access to it so go through this uh, uh, you know session of uh, selection methods that you have not there you were not there at that time so i conducted the session that is view you know how there are eight nine different ways of selection so tab is one of the ways try and understand that go through that whenever you have time or if i am not able to uh, because i won't be able to uh, conduct today's evening classes because i am traveling so uh, in the evening guys listen listen uh, in the krishna giri as well today in the evening i would not be able to take the classes so you guys uh, go through uh, because like, there are lots of people who are who have just joined and you, know, you should go through all those classes that i have shared okay in whichever place you are lacking just uh, show just see it plus see the bim uh, presentation as well that i have created okay and try and understand what is that now the coming back to the topic if you see i have selected this level this walls and i am going to press copy in my modify uh, area there is a copy to clipboard option now this copy to clipboard option is very much useful because you can do copy in between the projects as well when you have two different sets of projects and you want to you know copy one kind of an element to another kind of an element you can copy it you can copy the family as well but you can't copy in place families in place families are very much exclusive to the project i'll tell you later later on so if you say press copy copy to clipboard and the moment i press copy paste option get enabled and down side of it see there's an option called align to select the levels you do select it and then you say i want it to in level 2 3 you know level 2 3 and all and press okay it showed up 
Now, there were not more any more levels here. If you see here, this is this is the moment I selected and see this is a level two, and this is level one unconnected. So I'll select this part, tab it, and I'll say I want it to go to level two, level two. What happened? This is my level. This is a base country of level two. This is also unconnected. Actually, it's four thousand. Let's say, say level three. Actually, uh, the thing is, if you because I selected these level, these walls, these all were unconnected. So the same properties apply to the other walls that I have copied. So I'll tab it, okay, and I'll delete this. I'll just delete this. Tab, okay. First, I'll just going to say base constant one and top constant level two, okay. And then going to click here. But I have to see in my elevation as well that are what is my level one and level two. Level one is here. Level one and level two is in six one nine zero. Still, it's not showing up. Why? We made some changes before. <laughs> Wall basis level two to level three. Ah, huh? let's see one second. Just I create from here to here. This is my level two to level three. I'll cut to go to directly to 3D, and I just change it. Delete. Now this is a right way. These all start from level two and end up at level three. Yeah. I want I want it to be copied, and I want to align it the same place on the level three itself. Press OK. OK. Now these things level three up to level X Y Z is coming up, and then I'm going to copy it again, align the selected levels, and I'll say level one and level two. I want the same thing. Press OK. I think you know we have changed different different levels. That's why it's showing up. Um, I go to this uh, level one part. The main thing that I want to show it to you is if right now here you see it's red because I have done as VG and I said. My wall, my wall should be on the riveted part. And the same thing I wanted for the level two as well. Okay. Then I again have to press B G and then I again have to do this. Then again I will do this for level three, then level four, level five because I want my wall to be shown in structural plan for level as red, not an elevation norm. So I can't use global, but I have to use B G so many times. So in this case scenario, I make a set safe set of settings which is called view template. And then I'll apply that view template to all these, all these. Yes, it's very much time saving because eventually you will be having a lot of things. You do MEB people, you do this view template things because for MEB is very much important. So what will happen is when you go down in this view, uh, this view template, okay, and select it, you see it will have a same same set of settings. Like I'll tell you. Now see, this is a 3D view uh, view templates, and these are the floor elevation sections. So how you make a view template? How you create a new template? Hmm. Uh, what? 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 We'll go to manage then. Ah. Uh, View, 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 view,
So over here, let's go back to this. I have just said show me all the views. This is a view template. Now this level two, I can whatever I have put in level one, for example. Okay. In this level one, if you see overwrite graphics model edit, and I go down, this is a wall. Thing that I've done in level one. Okay, press OK. I'll say I want this uh, view template of level two to be shown as same as level one view template. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll put level one here and I'll apply apply. The moment I do this, okay, no. It's not showing up, man. Yeah, we are in level two. We are in level two right now, and we are changing this view template. We are changing this view template. Huh? There? Did it? Did it not a problem? Chalo, let's do this other other way. Let's create a one view template. I'll go over here and I'll say create a template from a current view. I'll press OK and I'll say uh, structural walls. Structural walls. I'll press OK. Over here, there's some certain set of settings which you have seen and I have told you. Like overhead model, annotation and article model important filters were there in VG. But if you see here view scale and these things, you will see it in view control bar that I've showed you because view control bar was what? Was what? View control bar was also a part of how the things will show up in your view things. That view control bar, you see the scale, scale is coming up, your display model is coming up, your uh, parts visibility is going coming up and then you go down this underlay orientation, your orientation filter, your discipline, coordination. Hai, hai. So the main important set of things will come up here. So over here if I say override the model, and over here I want my walls to be shown in cuts in the in the red part and I'll press OK. Okay. And press OK, I'll apply. And I'll call put this structural wall to it. This I I don't know why it is not happening. Should be happening to it. Now it happened. Change. It happened, it changed, but not complete change. Because I think it's over the no, not B. Uh, this is a wall. I'll again go to this view template, structure walls, and I change it again from here. Now I would not be using VG directly because now I'm using a view template. Eventually, even even if you see here, VG be up select karoge bina, everything would be grayed out. You can't even change from here as well because you have used a view template now. So if you select this view template. And from the structural walls, I say again edit and I'll go down, press discs, and I'll say five, six, pattern, okay, and then pattern. You see, you're able to see, right? Now, the same thing will happen when I go to this level three, level four. Level five, level one. So only the pattern will be changed. The height will be changed. The no, the thing is, what uh, cuts not okay. So that's the parameter thing which is not getting cut. It will come. So over here, if I select this more than four, you can see this view template. I select this part and I'll just select this structure walls and press OK. Now everyone has a same set of settings. So if you, if you go to level one here, you will have this set of settings. If you go to this level three, level four here. Now these things are not getting cut. I think that's why it's not showing up. Level three, let's go to level three. Level three is showing up, right, properly. So actually because we, in the previous class, we had changed levels. And not to show, the, as I told you, please don't change the level. The repercussion I'm feeling right now. So able to understand the philosophy of view template. That is the main purpose of it. So you, uh, you know, uh, for an example, just try and do stuff. On 10.30, we have a meeting here.
so we have to vacate the room anyhow and i think uh, we have this uh, session going on it's getting recorded yeah so okay guys thank you very much you just uh, like uh, i would be uh, giving you this uh, autocad the uh, autocad kera this rabbit curriculum to you because right now i don't get a time now i i will have a time because i'm traveling so i have time so i'll just create a uh, curriculum and i'll send it to you everyone that uh, within next week what we are all going to cover and with what are the main important aspects that we need to cover okay cool thank you thank you very much